Hey there, I'm Trevor Houston, the creator of the Who You Know Summit, and I'd like to welcome you to the Who You Know Job Networking Show. On our program, we'd like to show you a job search like you've never seen. Everything from getting noticed by employers, how to properly format your resume, and how to network effectively using LinkedIn to drive recruiters to your profile. We even take suggestions from our amazing community. So if you want to learn all things job search, go ahead and subscribe now. Focus. It's all about the job search. So if you want to learn how to land that next success, you heard them. All you got to do is subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on a thing. Welcome back to the Who You Know Job Networking Show, where what you know is important, but... Who you know Who you know? can make all the difference in your job search. It sure can. So let me tell you who I know. I got Jay <laughs> Mamie in the house. DJ Mamie. DJ Ray- Mamie. I said Ramey. <laughs> do Faso Ramey Do. I don't know, man. I'm sorry. I'm crazy. Look, Jay. Jay is a radio talk show host on 570 AM uh, KLIF Dallas. He's a CEO, entrepreneur maverick, noted 10-time author, speaker, sales psychology and (laughs) persuasion, persuasion selling expert and recruiter. You do a lot. I'm a pretty busy guy. Bro. And he's he's real. Look at his. I'm looking at this video on his webpage here, man. He's ripped. So. Yeah. Man. I'm like. Doing I'm it like, all. Bro, you, you do a lot, man. So, okay. Before we get to all what you do professionally, we like to have fun on this show. So, sure. we're going to do Would You Rather. Okay. And audience, I want you to also tell me in the comments, what would you rather? Here we go. <laughs> I got a good one for you. All would right. you rather have a mullet? Haircut or a ponytail haircut? Considering I don't have any hair, that's a good question. <laughs> He's like, I was hoping yes. you'd ask the other one with the shampoo and the toothpaste. <laughs> I, I was going to choose the toothpaste. <laughs> that was an easy one for me. I was in the back listening to it. <laughs> Mullet or ponytail? What do you think, man? You know what? I tell you, I, I think I'd probably go with the ponytail. Yes, I knew you'd go with the ponytail, that. man. I think it's pretty cool. Steven so, Seagal. Yeah, that's the look. Yeah, <laughs> that's the look. Yeah, I can see good. you. It goes Steven good. Seagal right here. That's his him. <laughs> now I just Martin. gotta get a motorcycle and I'm all right. There you, yeah. go. There you go. What do you think? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go with a mullet because, you know, you, Mar- can always, Mar- you can always put the mullet in a ponytail. <laughs> Dude. Right? Could y'all, audience, could you see there Mark go. with a there mullet? Go. Oh you know, my gosh. As a matter of fact, in the 90s, I had a mohawk. Oh, he did. I wow. had a mohawk. I had a foot long, Yo, tall oh. mohawk, and uh, shaved on the sides and everything. So this is back in my you know hoodlum days, <laughs> uh, back when I was a you know teenager. So, but yeah. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Hook with Robin Williams? Oh, here we go. It's like Peter Pan. Hook. <laughs> yeah, I have. You know, talk have. about a time ago. Yeah, Rufio. Rufio was the lost boy, the mm-hmm. oldest one. He had the mohawk. That's Mark. <laughs> Rufio. You should get a picture and post it sometime. I, we've done it before. I pull it up. I, I embarrass him. It's, it's been awesome. done. It's okay. been done, yeah. All right. We digress. We're having fun. We could do this all day. All right. So I want to know, let's talk about, uh, you're a sales expert, right? So Correct. For job search, a lot of it is sales. Matter of fact, life is sales. It's a, you know, you need to, it's a life skill. Mm-hmm. But especially in the job search, they got to sell themselves interviews, right? They're having to position themselves as the expert and sell themselves. What are some tips or like, let's talk about body language. How important is body language for, you know, selling yourself in an interview? Wait, body language is everything because at the end of the day, it's the message you portray with the way that you stand, the way that your shoulders are back, the words that you use, your posture, your facial expressions. People don't understand you say a lot more non-verbally than what you say actually verbally. Right. And sometimes you could you think you're saying the right thing that's, that's projecting a certain message, but your body's saying something different. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think if you're sensitive to the fact that commu- effective communication is verbal and non-verbal, you'll pay a lot more attention to what your body is saying than what your words are, are projecting. Now, it's a marriage of the two, right? I mean, you got to have the right words to say, but then also back that up with the visual cues, right? That's absolutely correct. I would say there's a whole bunch in the nonverbal. Like, let me give you an example. Uh Uh-oh, we're fixing the mic. See, this is live, y'all. Just so you know, look, we got the studio producer. Let's give a round of applause for our producer. Look, hey, got to do it live. We had one camera went out and all that kind of stuff. He's back there plugging stuff in. It's all good. Hey, this is what we do. It's live. Live TV. So where was I going? 
I don't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> mohawk. <laughs> you, you, yeah, mohawk. You're no, talking no, about no. the nonverbal cue. The nonverbal, yeah. Let me give you an example. So me and my son, Caleb, we got into it over uh, over the weekend, uh, over something silly, mm -hmm. and like I'm gonna tell you, there was a moment where he was like, like he gave me that flinch. You know what I'm talking about? Like that. Whoo, right? You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. He didn't have to say a word, but I was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> like, uh uh, like, no, you didn't. You know what I'm saying? Sure. He didn't have to say anything. And I knew exactly what he meant. And I was like, oh, hold up. So, nonverbal cues, guys, you got to think about that. You don't have to say anything. Your body language says a lot. Like, That's exactly mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Before we actually develop language, People communicated with physical expression. That hasn't gone away. We've developed language, but the ability to communicate with your body, like your son did with you, your yeah. son had a thousand words to say with one look. Oh my <laughs> goodness. You... Right? Bingo. So, I mean, and you understood right away. You didn't have to ask him, can you explain yourself, son? Right. You figured out right away what he was saying, and he didn't say one word. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's effective language uh, through your body. So, uh, what do we do to, to improve our body language, to, to really practice on this, to, to help? make sure that we're saying the right things in these interviews? I think it's important to go in prepared. I think a lot of people uh, approach interviews completely not prepared, not prepared just in the body language, but also and what they say is important. But a lot of it's understanding what the interviewer is thinking. Mm. And the interviewer is also reading your body language. And what they want to see is that the person in front of them is somebody who's confident, competent, and has the ability to communicate the content of the company, right? And you could say all you want with your words, but if you're slouching over, if you're looking distracted, if you don't look powerful and strong, mm. um, they're not going to buy what you're, what you're selling mm -hmm. as much as that they could if your body and your words are in alignment. Right. So you have to be mindful of your posture, your facial expressions, and also the tonality of your, of your voice. Sure. Uh, all that, adding the words to it makes it for a very compelling interview where you become memorable, which is the key to an interview. You have to become memorable. Right. Uh, I mean, you think about it. If you have an interviewer who's looking at uh, 100, 150, 250 resumes, what are you going to do that they remember you? What's your memorable moment that stands apart from the other resumes that they've looked at? Because after a while, they all look the same. Mm -hmm. right? right. But what are you going to do that they say, you know, something about that person, something about Trevor. I don't know, but there was just something about him. That, that little unction they have could be the very reason why they call you back. So 100% of what feeling. What is that? What, so as you're, you know, training, coaching, talking with people, um, and they're needing that, right, that, that umph, that extra, what, what's something that they could do? First thing is command. Okay. Command. The person who commands the room will always get everybody's attention. I've trained myself, and I want, when I come into a room... I command the attention. I'm not greedy for the attention. It's not a uh, uh, egotistical position. It's I want to command the room. I want people to say that guy's up to something. I don't know what he does, but he's up to something. <laughs> right. I need to get close to him. I need to find yeah. out what he's saying. Let me figure out if I like or hate him. That's exactly right. <laughs> I don't yeah. know yet. Right. But I need to figure it out. They want to get close to him. <laughs> okay. Um, now it's important because uh, the person who has the most amount of command usually will have leverage. And the, the challenge is that when you are looking for a job, you come in from a weak position because you're hoping they hire me, right? Right, right, You're right, hoping right. I say, and that guy, that gal who's interviewing knows that they have authority. The power. Right. They got the power. I got the they power. Got, they, got, they got what you want. Right. right. They got it. Yeah. Right. So you've got to raise yourself to that level, not in a way to usurp them or to threaten their authority, but in a way that allows them to understand, and this is you do that in your body language and the way you come into a room. That, hey, I'm at the level, uh, I'm at your playing level. I can contribute here. I belong here. Yes. You need me here. Yes. Okay. I dropped my mic. that mic. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> now, here's what happens. Most people walk in, and if you, even if you practice that or you coach them to do that, their natural sense of fear and insecurity and lack of uh, validation is going to get the best of them. It erodes. The, yep. It does. That, that It'll eat away. By the time they go from the door to the seat, they're done. <laughs> right? You spend hours helping them, but by the time they get to those five steps to the, the, the chair that they're sitting in to interview, it's gone. Right? Mm -hmm. So it takes, it takes being able to remember what you've learned 
so you can stand strong and stay there in a good position. You well, know, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, and that's, that's, that's kind of like muscle memory, right? You have to condition yourself to be that way. That's right. What this reminds me of, just this conversation, it takes me back to my old car days, okay? And I was like 22 years old when I first got in, and um, I remember, like, a lot of it's kind of like an interview. You're, 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 you're talking with somebody who's buying a car, but it's not just that. Like, somebody would come in, I was 22 years old, and somebody would come in who was maybe like 65 years old, who's bought, you know, 10, 15, 20 cars in their lifetime or whatever, right? And they were looking at me like, What's this young buck going to say, right? They were automatically judging me. So I had to command respect and command and, and to, to gain that command as you were talking about. Uh, otherwise, they were going to walk all over me because and it happened right mm -hmm. when I first got in the business. These these old school cats would walk all over me. They would push <laughs> me around in the car dealership and, and, and thinking, you know, I'm going to push my weight around to get a deal. Mm -hmm. Right. And eventually I had to get bold and courageous and, and let them know, hey, you ain't going to push me around, but I did it and I got the respect. I did it in a way that was respectful, like you said. It's not just going into that interview and, you know, making the the recruiter or the hiring manager, you're not putting them down. You got to do it in a way that commands their respect. Correct. So uh, it just reminded me of that. It reminded me back in the day of my old school car days. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So I love that. I love that. We w we had a mic drop moment. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the audience real quick. Let's go to the audience. Let's see. Uh, we got a question. What's something we can ask them? Hmm. Good question. Good question. Oh, okay. Hold on. I got one. You have one? Okay. Yep. I got one here. So... What was the what's the radio station that um, he's a talk show, he's a radio talk show host? What's the what's the station? I want to know the number. It's a it's a certain number. It's on AM. I'm gonna give you some clues. It's on AM. Uh, what, what was the number? This may be a tough one. Somebody's like, I don't, I wasn't listening to that. <laughs> but I gotta I gotta make sure our audience is paying attention. Good. And if you win, if you win, what do they win? Um, what did we say we were gonna do? Oh, we're gonna give a copy of your book. Yes, sir. Tell me about your book. Sure. So this book is called Battling Invisible Enemies, Facing Your Inner Struggles Head On. It's my best-selling book. It's one of these books I wrote. I actually wrote it to myself because I know we all deal with head trash, right? Which is appropriate to the conversation of having an interview because you deal with the head trash going into the interview. Right. So I talk a lot about how do you fend off these invisible enemies that uh, come at you on a daily basis, which could be worry, fear, doubt, discouragement, depression, mm -hmm. anxiety. Yep. These are all the enemies that we battle with every day. And uh, unless you know how to fend them off or really avoid them in the first place, you're going to find yourself in daily battles that can suck your performance. It could certainly uh, drain you of energy. And it'll get you distracted from the main things you want to do in life. That book, believe it or not, uh, has helped so many people. It's not a sexy book. It's not a sexy topic. <laughs> but, uh, but it's one that's really, really needed. And it's uh, making a big impact in the lives of so many. Awesome. Tell me about. We, no, we got a winner. Oh, we, well, yeah, yeah, we got a winner. Yeah, we we got winners, man. Like, well, we got we got a winner. Well, we okay. got a winner. Yeah. So you we, have Michael. Yep, that's who okay. I got. Who All I right. got? Okay. And just disclaimer for the audience. Disclaimer. Okay. Uh, the uh, the views of these live comments are not always the views <laughs> of what you see. Um, <laughs> sometimes there's uh, discrepancies. I don't know why. LinkedIn, work on it. Just saying. Um, <laughs> Michael. Michael, Michael, Michael. Uh, how do you pronounce his last name? Sibet? Uh, that's probably close. Pretty close. Yeah, pretty Michael Sibet, <laughs> congratulations to you. You get a copy of the book. That is awesome. Round of applause for Michael. Right, yes, Michael. The answer was 570. Yep, 570. That was the answer. Okay, you had a question. Well, and it's on his LinkedIn. Um, so be sure to link in with uh, Jay. So yes, make sure you do that. IEDS. IEDs? IEDs. IEDs. Can you tell us about IEDs? IEDs are what I call uh, inner struggle defense system, right? So <clears throat> it's one thing to find yourself in the battle, but what do you do to get out of the battle? How do you create a defense system? Listen, the biggest militaries in the, in, uh, on the planet have defense systems. When they, when they uh, pick up on some kind of enemy or some kind of attack that's coming, they automatically inst institute a defense system. We've got to do the same. When we see an invisible enemy coming, we've got to create our own defense system. Otherwise, we'll get sucked into that battle, and uh, it'll take us forever to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So it's an, it's great. It's an inv invisible enemy defense system. Yeah, you got to have a plan. You got to have it. Right.
got to have it. And it's got to be before it happens. So. Absolutely. <laughs> the best way to, to, to win a battle is just not to get into the battle. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> just don't get in there. Right. Don't get throw in a there. mic on that one. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. All right. So you were referred to us by Fanny Dunnigan. Correct. How do you know Fanny? Fanny, actually, we connected on LinkedIn. Okay. And we support each other in our content, and she asked me to come on her show. Got it. So I did a show on thriving in your mm -hmm. career in the new decade. Everybody loves Fanny. Okay, so we love Fanny. Appreciate you. Shout out to Fanny Dunnigan yes, out, Fanny. out there. She is awesome. Uh, what's cool about Fanny, and uh, I, I, I did give her a message. I did get her a message out, but it was, it was too soon. Um, she is like... Whenever, if, if Foster can't make it or one of us can't make it, if I can't make it, she, she'll come sub for us on the what show. Cool. So she's like a, one of our sub hosts. Um, but we got, her, we got a, a message out her, to her today, but it was too soon. So I was hoping she could make it. That would uh, be cool. Because she great. referred you, that right? That would have been nice. I, I was nice. hoping. So let's talk about uh, networking. So mm -hmm. you, you um, were on her show. You were networking and stuff like that. And that's what got you here today. What are some networking strategies? What are some things that you, you teach or... Um, that could help people open some doors, opportunities. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that you've got to do is you've got to make sure that you get yourself out there by intention. Um, you cannot be what I call a, uh, a closet networker, mm. right? You certainly can't be an uh, undercover um, uh, networking person. You've got to make sure that you're out there all the time. No secret agents here, right? So I'll give an example of how important that is. I moved here from New York. It'll be three years from now, uh, three years ago in 2019. Uh, okay. Uh, 2018, rather. And I didn't know anybody out here. Right. Where did you move from? New York. Oh, New York. Okay. So I knew two people, my wife and this business colleague. And one of them didn't even like me. <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully, I got along well with my, with my business colleague. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my wife, Moni Plain. <laughs> just, just That's the mic drop. <laughs> That's the mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's my anniversary. Right. I can't get out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I, I came out here, and after I figured out where the Kroger's were, where the pediatrician was, and I kind of got my, my footing, I said, okay, I need to go meet some people. And I'm not going to meet people at home. So I used to always tell folks, in order to have success in networking, you've got to be able to turn two knobs, uh, be able to handle two knobs, a doorknob to open a door to get out of the house. Mm. Okay? And back then, when a TV was on, I said, turn a TV knob off. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Turn a doorknob <laughs> to open and get out of the house, because you're not going to meet anyone at home. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So I came out here, I went up on pulled up uh, meetup.com and looked what all the networking groups were happening. Meetup.com. I just, every single day I was somewhere meeting somebody new. That's a great point. So I, I, I want to I stop there for just a quick second. Meetup.com, right? So all the networking meetings are, are there. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know, it's been a, been a while since I've been to the site. We used to teach that a lot since COVID. Does anybody know here, meetup.com, is it still... Like, still a lot of meetings and groups oh, yeah. and things Absolutely. going yeah. on. Probably Is this more still now, happening? More now than ever. Exactly. Yeah. Now since COVID. So even it's more. Still, okay, it's guys, huge. go to meetup.com. Go check it out. And it's not a dating site, okay? Meetup.com. <laughs> right. No, you're not going to find many dates there. Yeah, <laughs> no. Right. Right. But they've all. got all sorts of special interest groups and things like that. Great place to, to meet people. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You have so, to be intentional about it. What are, what are uh, some of the groups that you targeted? Were, was it like... Um, Business groups? Was it special interest groups? Was it I love dogs groups? Like what, what kind of groups? It was any group? group that I felt that I can have some synergistic value by showing up. Okay. So in other words, I didn't want to go to a group where people would wonder, why is that guy here? Right. right. You know, because then it would be so obvious that I'm there to with some kind of personal agenda. Right. So I wanted to be able to assimilate into a group where people could see, yeah, that makes sense that he's here. Right. So I, I went into fitness groups. Okay. That makes there you sense. Go. I went into uh, groups where, uh, uh, you know, fathers of young boys. Okay. I went into business groups. Anywhere there was a reason to, to have a like-minded conversation just to meet people. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Like-minded <laughs> conversation. There yep. you go. That's right. And, and I think that's important because there's a lot of, of people that are in career transition, you guys out here, um, there's a lot of people who are struggling to connect. They're struggling to find the right people to talk to, but it doesn't have to be hard. You just have to get out, like you said, two knobs, um, and you're looking in the wrong places, right? There's a lot of people that are going to, and please don't take this the wrong way for any of the group leaders or anything like that, but you know, you're going to three, four, five different career transition things a week. Well, everybody else there, you're learning great things, but everybody else there is out of a job. So you need to get out and network with people that actually have jobs. And I would agree with that too. I would say, what, what you're saying is 
you know, everybody there in these job networking groups, they don't have a job. But I will say they can still help you. If you guys work together, your commonality, what he was talking about, your commonality is the fact that you're all unemployed. You're yeah. all, well, I don't like to use that word. I just said it, unemployed. I don't Unemploy- like that. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying. You're Under, Underemployed. You, you're, you're on your way to your next best success. But what in I'm transition. saying, in, yes, transition, in transition, that's the word I was looking for. So that's your commonality, right? And if you, if you all band together and build a community together and help each other, right, that's what you need to do. Help each other. Right. And, and I would be, if I was a job seeker, I would be pouring myself out on other job seekers. I would be figuring out how I can help them. How can I connect you? What are you looking for? What are you searching for? How can I help connect some dots for you? What do you think they're going to do after you do that? Yeah. Tons of value you. there. I think, though, that, but to, to the, the point I was trying to make is you have to, a little of, of everything, right? I you have you. to have diversity in what you're doing as far as the networking goes. I get too. you. I get you. I, 100%. Yes. Yeah, so, so one of the things I share with folks is, um, and, I, and it, it kills me when I hear someone say oftentimes, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. Well, I think that's a big mistake because if you happen to stay in your lane, the challenge is you miss all the other traffic on all the other lanes. But more importantly, it's not about staying in your lane. It's about staying on the highway but it's okay to switch lanes as mm. long as you're on the same highway. Yeah. It's okay to switch lanes, but stay on the same highway uh, because it'll give you a better experience and you'll have a, a better opportunity to meet some people that you would have never met if you only stayed in your lane. Bingo. So if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room, right? Correct. Stay in your lane means just like stay in your little bubble, right? You got to blow your bubble up. You got to get out there, meet some people who challenge you. Our, iron sharpens iron. What about somebody who doesn't think like you? Someone who doesn't look like you? Someone who doesn't talk like you? Right? You don't think you can learn from those people? Right? You need to go out there and and blow your bubble up. Meet some new people. Get out. Yeah, into the seriously. World. Yeah. Yeah. Like diversity. Get out there. Meet some new people. Gosh, Talk I'm to gonna, Jay. Meet Jay. I'm going to tell you, uh, something that's been just an absolute blessing for me has been the Breakfast with Champions Clubhouse Room by Glenn Lundy. And in that room, it's so diverse. There's people from all over the world, different backgrounds, walks of life. But there is the commonality these are all what I call world changers, light shiners. Uh, you know, these people are just pouring themselves out and want to change the world. These people are amazing. And so there's just so much value being poured out. But what's cool about it is you get to see it from different perspectives, different, you know, uh, ethnicities and backgrounds and people that don't look like you and don't talk like you. It's just, it's a beautiful thing when I see that. Um, Anyway, so shout out to Glenn Lundy and uh, Breakfast with Champions. Guys, we, uh, we're running low on time. Yep, we're there. Um, we want to take another poll. Yeah, let's take a poll. Let's we do asked when, when we started the show where you were at, 10 to 1, 1 to 10, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Did we uplift you? Did we encourage you guys? Uh, did Jay, did Maria, did they make an impact in your day today? Yeah. How are you feeling now? One to ten, let us know. It's okay. You know, if we need to kick Jay off the stage, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. He threw, we got mics. Oh, yeah. He we, got mics. We, we and tried, by it, the way, his book, get his book. You can't get it on Amazon. I just looked. It is out on Amazon. You can't get it on Amazon. It's sold out. You need to go to his website, which is. Which is. The, the J Mamie. TheJMamie.com. The, the only. The J Mamie. Uh, so Meg Rose says nine. Uh, let's see. These comments are starting to come in. Uh, let's see. We got eight, nine, ten, plus, plus, plus. Mm-hmm. Uh, seven now, but I had ice cream. <laughs> what an amazing comment. I want your ice That's cream. That's awesome. I love you, Joe. I'm jelly. That's okay, awesome. I have jelly for the ice cream. Um, <laughs> one last thing I'm going to ask of you guys before we head out today. I want you to think real hard right now. Okay, think right now. Each one, reach one, okay? If, if there's someone out there that you think should be watching this show that, that needs some support, that needs some help, another job seeker. So what I'm going to ask you is, who do you know? Who do you know? Tag them in the comments right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll take just a moment here, but I want you to do that. Be thinking right now. We're going to do this right now. So take a moment. And tag someone who you think, it could be a job seeker, it could be a recruiter, it could be, you know, a company, you, you know, you could, you could do that too. So tag some folks here that you think should be watching this show, if, you, if it brought you some value today, we'd appreciate that. Practice hope, yeah. help other people every day. Because think about that, you know. think about that, each one reach one, just one. I'm not asking you to do 10, 20, or 100, 
I, one person, tag one person right now. Because we could literally double, literally double. And then the next time we come in here, we do it again, right? Then double. And then that's how you make impact, guys. That's how you reach more people. It's about impact for us. So each one reach one, and let's serve the world. Let's do our part. Jay, thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Appreciate, Appreciate being, you here. being thank here. you, fellas. Guys, that's the show. It's, it's all, all about, about who you know. know. Bye. Trevor Houston here, and I want to thank you for tuning in to the Who You Know Job Networking Show. We hope you've been inspired, encouraged, educated, and entertained all at the same time. For information on our different events, workshops, partners, or partnership opportunities available, check out whoyouknow.show for more details. And be on the lookout for our new mobile app coming soon. You never know how this show can help someone you know. You know, and if we've made an impact or put a smile on your face today, don't forget to hit that share button on your way out. Until next week, it's all about who you know. Bye.